Hello, hello, we are back again. Sorry everyone, we just had a technical issue before and yeah, here I am again. Hopefully, please God, this is gonna work now. So Davide, if you want to, let's see if I can invite him. Welcome everyone to this live today. I'm delighted to have you all here. I think it should work now. Welcome, Jose. Welcome, Anatoly. Welcome, Lila. Welcome, Davide. Welcome, Shelly. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Lari. Now, in a couple of days, guys, I'm going to do a live where any of you can actually join me if you want to. You can send me the invite during the live. You can participate with me. You can sing with me. You can pray with me <laughs> during the live. Um, Today we are kind of um, focusing on David's testimony, um, which is a beautiful testimony and I hope you all will enjoy it. And I'm delighted to be here today. So just to introduce myself while we wait for him. Um, my name is Mariana, you can call me Mary if you want. And I have been living in Ireland for nearly 10 years now. There you go. Go live with, yeah, I think it's going to work now. And here I am, you know, singing around and trying to, uh, with my abilities, to bring the word of God. Hi! <laughs> Finally! Finally! <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> I'm great. I'm great. Uh, thank you. It's just uh, crazy between laptop, mobile phone and technology. <laughs> I know. You know what? I, I get lost all the time, you know, between this Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. It's just too much. You know, I just <laughs> I can't really, it, I can't get my head around. <laughs> and, you know, you, you, you click uh, no allow his, no allow that, and then you need it and you don't know how to do it. But, uh, you know, <laughs> Praise to Our Lady of Fatima. Here I am, you know, finally. <laughs> Thank, Thank God. God. Yeah, Thank yeah, God. yeah, yeah. Anyway, before we start, I just want to thank you, David, for, you know, accepting my invitation for being here today. Um, I'm delighted, you know, to be here and to spread the word and to help people, you know, and it's, it's a gift. It's a gift, especially for today, you know, Our Lady of Fatima. It's a, I think it's a beautiful day for, you know, for you to share with us, you know, and to be here together you know so thank you very much first of, of all thank you thank you for having me um okay so we don't want to waste any time guys and thank you all for joining you know, a lot of people are joining us now so first of all thank you david for coming and would you mind david maybe if you want to introduce yourself to us and um, this life is going to be i just at the beginning but this live is going to be saved here on instagram guys facebook and we are going to post on youtube as well so please please share the word and maybe someone out there it's extremely need of what you're going to hear today from david so please share and please god this is going to reach out you know whoever is in need so maybe david if you want to introduce yourself to us are you married how many kids you have where you're from please Tell us. Yes, no problem. Yeah, Mariana. Uh, first of all, you know, whoever is uh, joining us, uh, you know, uh, may God bless you. You know, thank you for uh, taking time to be with us. Uh, yes, I am married. I'm blessed, blessed married with Neve uh, for, we've been 19 years in uh, July. We have been blessed with six children, three boys and three girls. And we live on the this, we say the doorstep of the shrine of Nock. Um, my eldest son is 17, 
Uh, my youngest daughter is seven, so, um, you know, beautiful ages. Um, but I'm no Irish, as you <laughs> will find from my strong uh, Mayo accent. Uh, I'm, I'm not <laughs> Irish know? too, so you're fine. <laughs> I was born. I was born actually on the land of San Don Bosco, uh, northwest Italy, uh, into a farming farming background, a small village. Uh, Turin will be the city, the closest cities where I where I grew up. That's a blessing. Um, it was a blessing. Yes, no, for me, unfortunately, <laughs> my young age, but it's a blessing uh, uh, for the last, we say, twenty-seven years. It's a blessing to go home and be able to access the shrine and the place where Don Bosco has grown up and his faith because he was so dedicated to young people himself. Yeah. And, um, and it's something that has always been close to my heart since my conversion, really, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, who I am, you know? Okay. So for how long have you been in Ireland, Davide? I arrived in Ireland in 1999. Okay. Uh, with a project, with a project uh, from the community Cenacolo. Um, okay. So you see, I'm in recovery. I'm a heroin addict, criminal, gangster, you name it. I was all of them. And I spent three years in Italy in this Catholic uh, community. And then a project came to come to North Europe okay. to start a, fr a fraternity to help people with addiction. And I started here in Nock in 1999. So okay. Okay, that's amazing. 20, 20 years, like, okay. you know, 20 years over in Ireland. Okay, yeah. okay. So, you are going to give your testimony very soon, and just before you go into that, I think everyone is actually excited to hear what you have to say, but just before yep. we go into that, so you, you said you moved to Ireland to the Chena with Chenacolo community, yeah? Indeed, yes, community Chenacolo, yeah. Okay, okay. And do you know... Um, like uh, what countries roughly we do have Chinaclo nowadays? Is that only in Italy or do we have Chinaclo like around the world? No, we have 78 houses uh, spread all over the world. Okay. We live in Divine Providence. We have uh, actually from Brazil, we have a mission in Brazil for children in the street uh, in the area of São Paulo. There is okay. a big house in, in Jahu, Jahu uh, where we welcome uh, men uh, with drugs problem. Um, not only that, we, with aid to the church in it, we are aware as well. We found the, uh, the Fazienda Esperanza in, oh, in Brazil right, yeah. as well. Yes, yes. Um, so Chenacolo covers, we say, from the Philippines to South America, mainland, mainland Europe and North America as well. So we are everywhere, everywhere. Okay. Really, there is a fraternity in nearly every European country and, uh, you know, uh, it's, it has been a blessing. It's been God's work through us, men and women, surrender our lives to Christ and following the teaching of Mother Elvira, we went forward and um, as myself, Italian, I packed my bags with not a word of English and we came and opened a fraternity here in Ireland. So yeah. the story is similar for every house. Like. Exactly, yeah. And you know, um, I think... Co uh, Chenacolo community was actually a blessing, even for myself, you know, for my husband here in Ireland, we, we got to know this community back in, I think, in 2013 or 14 when okay. I was, when I was playing, you know, and doing my music yes. ministry with Matalbot's mission, you know, with Father Brian yes. and all that. And yes. I'm just saying that because for the first time when I heard like all of your guys, you know, yourself and some other friend of yours testimony in Nock, that was really touching, you know. So from that, I had that, you know, ex very strong experience. So I'm sure, you know, a lot of people, um, they can change their lives. So that, that's, I think, the main message today. God can, God can heal, you know, and he's there to heal, you know. And so if you want to go now and yeah. share with us a little bit of your testimony. I'll, I'll tell free. you, I'll tell you. Yeah, I'll tell you a little bit. Uh, it's better to start... Uh, where everything went wrong, uh, to arrive where everything is fine. Um, as I say, I, I grew up in uh, North Italy, in a small family, just my, myself and my youngest brother. Uh, we were brought up Catholic, but my parents didn't practice the faith, okay? okay. Um, it was a very, very uh, fearful environment. Uh, there was no love in the house. My, I never saw my parents uh, hugging each other, kissing each other. 
uh, it was very uh, tough environment, fearful environment. You know, a lot of physicality between my mother and father towards myself and my brother. Uh, a lot of anger, a lot of confusion, a lot of, uh, um, a lot of, uh, we say, you know, uh, confusion in one sense because we were brought in into the church and the church were telling us that God is love, God, God, uh, God is great. And, and, but when you were going and walking the threshold of your own house and you were beaten to death by your own mother and father, you know what I mean? It didn't make too much sense because they would say, where is God in all of this? Where is God in all of this? And, you know, growing up with anger inside, um, I made a caution decision. I don't want to love. Love is not real. It does not exist. And that brought me to become what I became. I became starting drinking at early age, smoking ash, marijuana, whatever you call it. But at the age of 14, I was injecting heroin in through my veins. And I thought I found the answer to all the questions I had in my life. Okay, so what I have today, when I was young, I find the answer into a substance. Okay. I needed that substance to kill the pain that my parents, society, uh, my fear, my, 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 my innocence as well, like, you know what I mean, my, my, my anger. Heroin was the answer. Heroin brought me to the darkest place of my soul. It detached me completely from my parents. I left home at an early age. I traveled around Europe. I became involved in serious criminality uh, just to maintain power. You know, okay. I, yeah. felt, I, felt, I felt respected. I felt that I, knew, I didn't need my parents anymore and that I could stand up in the world on my own. But definitely one thing that was profound inside of me was loneliness. Okay. The lack of trust, no friends. People that will use you only because you have things or you have connection. And that life brought me to become homeless. So I, I, I lived for three and a half years on the main train station in Turin. Uh, I became 40 kilos. I had a long beard, long hair, very dirty, the same clothes for months. And I attempted suicide five times because my brain at the time yeah. thought that the best solution to solve my childhood problem, my addiction problem, it was to, instead to act, it was to give up. I didn't dream okay. about hope. I didn't dream about uh, there is a future for me. There is, I, I, I had no, nothing to grasp on. So I attempted suicide five times. The last time I was a week on coma. And they were searching for my parents. They were brought in uh, with the clothes and everything because they were going to detach the machine and let me. So if I fight, it's good. If I die, it's good. Okay. Every time I. Every time I attempt a suicide, my only desire was, I hope I don't want to wake up. That was the desire. The fifth time, the doctor in this big, massive Turin hospital, where I was brought in five times in a row, he said it to me, he called me, because I woke up from the coma. Okay, now here, I didn't see white light, I didn't see tunnels, I didn't see anything. I just woke up from the coma. And I unplug myself from the machine. And the people go crazy because I light a cigarette in the ICU unit. I nearly blow the hospital off. People were like, you know what I mean? Who is this madman? And I say, let me go, let me go. The doctor called me and said, he called me by my first name. He said, Davide, God doesn't want you yet. The devil doesn't want you yet. So there is something in this hurt that you have to accomplish before you go. Those words are still imprinted in my heart today. Okay. I remember the face of his, the doctor. I went back to the train station, but in 1996, there was an elderly man that used to bring tea and coffee to the homeless. For three and a half years, that man came every Monday night. I never saw him. 
But after the attempt to suicide, my eyes were open. I saw Peter. His name was Peter. Peter talked to me. He never gave out about me. He never said, look at the state of you. Look what you're doing with your life. He always said, how are you, my son? Have you eaten today? How is your life? Have you not enough of this? And if you want, there is a place where you can go and change your life. He was not judging you, isn't it? He was not judging. He was just showing love. Not at all. He actually, he actually saved many, many young men and women from the train station in Turin by his just being there and just being caring and loving, no judgmental. He didn't care who we were. We were children of God for him. So I listened to Peter and I went home and I entered the community in Chenacle. And that's where I encountered the Lord Jesus in okay. community Chenacle. That's absolutely uh, beautiful. As an addict uh, for life, I do, this is only my personal opinion, wherever people listen, you know, if there is no an awakening of the souls, if there is no a recognition of a power greater than yourself, because the power greater than myself before community was drugs. Okay. My God was drugs. But anyone that is struggling in life, if they have not a spiritual awakening with the Lord who has created each one of us, there is no true, re there is no true um, recovery. There is no true um, understanding why I'm alive. What's my goal in life? In community, Chenak and I learned that very hard. We work very hard. We yeah. pray very hard. Nobody is nice at the beginning. Everybody tell all your defects, you know, and they have no problem telling you what's wrong with you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and the miracle, Mariana, is that uh, I end up into a house in Tuscany, that center, Italy, with there was 26 men. The majority were Bosnian and Croatian, so they were speaking another language. And they were very, very serious on their life prayer. They had faith. And they were very tough to me personally, like, you know. Okay. And I used to tell them, you gypsy, you come here to my country. You should be grateful to me. You come here, we save your lives. We pray. And I didn't realize only today I was so grateful to those guys. Yeah. Because they saved my life. They brought me to the chapel. They didn't say to me, you know, of course, they say to me, you're full of pride. You, you know, the things you have done are wrong. You have to change your attitude. The way you behave with people is wrong. Um, and you don't change don't, those things overnight. But they say, but you don't have to change. You have to surrender to God. He will help you to change. So they brought you to the chapel where the Blessed Sacrament is. And at the beginning, I did not understand anything about it. I just went um, because I was obliged. You know what I mean? It wasn't uh, uh, something that um, you would fight over. Because you're not stupid. We are the most clever people. Drug addict to survive in the world are the most astute, clever people that you could meet. They can create anything from nothing to get money or to get whatever they want. So if you can turn that power to do good things in the world, it means that every brothers and sister today are sitting in the corner of every street or in Ireland, in Brazil, in Italy. Yeah. If they have the power to surrender their life to God, you can imagine how great things they can do for others and for themselves. Exactly. And so I spent three years in Italy and then I loved the style of life. I loved the prayer. I wasn't fearful before community to be a gangster. And I wasn't fearful to walk around with my rosary in my hands. I couldn't care less what the people thought about it. I discovered that, that um, through prayer, I had few very profound experience that, you know, uh, in words, people that, live in secular world you could not explain because they will not understand unless they try themselves. But I do believe Jesus is real. 
It is is alive, is among mm-hmm. us, mm-hmm. and is helping us through our struggle to carry the cross. So three years in Italy, and then the project for Ireland came, and I arrived to Ireland. And then the Lord had prepared a saint for me, you know, a good friend of mine that was in community is a holy priest today, a uh, 16-year priest. And he said, the last, to- the last thing you, st- you stole, st- even in community, was an angel from God. It was my wife, you know. So he always <laughs> says to me, you're still, ro- you're still robbing, even when you're well, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, but in a good way. You know, so we are married, we are married 19 years, blessed with six children. Life is not easy. So when you contacted me, I imagine how people were living this lockdown. You know what I mean? Because the reality when you put the radio on or you listen to the mainstream media is that people are suffering. Exactly. Yeah. People, people, people are suffering. And through A to the Church in it, the work I do in Ireland is fundraising for the poor, for the persecuted. And who better than me can understand people that are persecuted? Because I persecuted my own family. I persecuted myself. And today I am here to tell the story. Yeah. A lot of my best friends that we grow up together, they're dead. They didn't have a second chance. So for me, every day is an opportunity to give back in memory of them, but also to have the courage, because I have courage. I, I, I learned from God that you have to have courage to go out and preach the gospel, Absolutely. sometimes in silence, sometimes in prayer. But tell the people, tell the people that they are suffering, that there is no end. You know, your suffering can finish if you wish. There is plenty of help. Exactly. There is plenty of help. You know? And you're talking about um, family as well. Something very interesting came to my mind. I was, you know, listening today about, you know, the message of Fatima, Our Lady of Fatima today. Yes. And, you know, one of the things that she said, uh, actually, was that, you know, the very last thing that, let's say, devil was going to try against humanity was against family, you know. Yes. And uh, if, if we look around, you mentioned lockdown as well. So we do have a pandemic lockdown. And it's, it's very clear, I think, for all of us, uh, how families are kind of breaking up in front of our own eyes. And, yeah. you know, life has been tough, you know, for a lot of people. So what would be, like, your view, you know, during this very difficult time, families are breaking up, marriage, children are, you know, just all over the place. So what would be your view? What would you, let's say, suggest, recommend for all of us as families, you know, because we are, uh, the families are just, you know, breaking in front of our eyes. So what would you, what would you, be, from your experience, what would you recommend? What would, would you tell us, you know? But <clears throat> definitely from lockdown point of view, uh, for family like yours, Mariana, or mine, the beautiful things that happened during lockdown maybe is that our domestic church has got stronger absolutely because yeah. we needed we needed we needed to pray more but for the people that have no faith you know and that's why we are we are here tonight discussing you know what i mean because uh, like i i learned that we are not here to judge anyone you know you don't have to be a denomination no. you know we are all brothers and sisters in christ it doesn't matter whatever whatever situation in life that there is hope but if people doesn't know People don't know. People are afraid to engage. In example, for family, there is a huge ministry in Ireland called Cana for married couple that they can uh, connect even through Zoom and, and get uh, rebuilt or if there is problem, but also if there is no problem, just to join, to be in a community together. Um, for young people, you know, there is a lot of ministry alive in online because everything went online. In example, you know, for many addicts in Ireland, all the, we say, NA, AA, gamble, gambler, uh, you know, all the rooms were closed. Yeah. You, couldn't, you couldn't go to meeting. But a beautiful inspiration from God, from a group from the southeast area of uh, Ireland, came up with an amazing idea of three meetings online every day for people in recovery. 
and they're called Better Together. I will pass on all the information to you and you can my, we can my add it to the Facebook or to the, or to the YouTube. So people are aware that the church, the people in recovery haven't stopped fighting the battle. Exactly. exactly. Are, are still united, are still helping each other. So better together for me become my outgoing where I recharge my battery and I help others to 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 just sharing my life experience my my day how do i how do i make it through morning to night without drinking or taking drugs even after 27 years or when family are broken down because uh, you know you know uh, financial reason you know how many men and women have lost jobs during this lockdown yeah how, how many people have looked for an answer to the bottle or to pharmacy or medication, like, you know what I mean? So we don't judge. It's impossible to judge, but we have to let them know that there is much better things out there available for free. It don't cost any money. That's the best part, you know? for free. <laughs> exactly. But you see, God works, God's work is for free. Your work is for free. My work is for free. What we are doing together, we are bringing people united. What the devil is trying to do is disunite us. At the beginning was the COVID. Who is, uh, you know, oh, stay away from this, stay away from that. You know, people believed that there was a pandemic. People didn't believe there was a pandemic. When the COVID finished was the lockdown. People want to be in lockdown. People didn't want to be in lockdown. Now, Lockdown is finished. Now is the vaccine. People want the vaccine. People don't want the vaccine. <laughs> it's just mental. You know what I mean? Like people, are, uh, you know, there is no middle ground. You know, one side or the other side. There is no halfway. But look, in, in life, you have to halfway. The halfway is to understand that there is a power greater than ourselves. If I surrender my life to drugs, I know where I'm going to end up back to the train station in Turin, I will lose my wife, I will lose my children, because I will not be the man I am today. If I choose recovery, I go looking for recovery. If I choose to stay well, I go looking for meetings. So it's, a, it's not just the something in the head, you have to act. You have to physically act. You know, sometimes we spend hours looking Facebook, looking uh, internet, YouTube, uh, you know what I mean? Everything helps, but People like myself need to be connected first to God and then to fellowship. Otherwise, okay. there is no hope, you see? So the devil is trying to attack. He's attacking us since, he, since we've been created. Since the church has been created, yeah. the church is under attack by the devil. But he didn't win yet. And we and are here to prove it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you were just talking about, um, just going back a little bit about, you know, your testimony. Yeah. Uh, you know, I do know, uh, Phil, um, parents, you know, that are kind of struggling. Um, yeah. They know their kids, unfortunately, are going through uh, this, you know, drug addiction route. And, yeah. of course, during the pandemic, you can imagine, it got worse. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of, it's kind of, if there was an emptiness inside their heart. So yeah. a lot of people, unfortunately, try to find this reason for the, the meaning for the life in the drugs. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. Um, so let's say if the parents, they actually recognize their children are just different, or they actually know they are going through that route. What would you, what do you think would be the first thing a parent should do? Okay, my child, I don't know, 14 years old, it's going to that route. Because, you know, I'm a parent right now. My daughter is only four. But sometimes I wonder, okay, what should I do? You know, and maybe some of the people that are watching, they are going through where they know someone. So what would be the first step? What did you tell us? Like, Look, uh, the beautiful it's hard. thing is... I, I, I know it's a hard question. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. No, it's not hard. It's, it's very simple, actually. You are worried what will happen to your child. Uh, you don't have to worry about too much about the future. What you're doing today will be the future. So the whatever relationship we have with your child is a good relationship, you will carry that on. Yeah. Uh, 
A to the church in Ireland. We are going out uh, from Friday. We are writing to uh, a huge number of parish to bring my testimony out to fundraise for the poor and the persecuted because we are aware of the pain. People want to be in pain. They're addicted to pain. My uh, suggestion to parents that have children that are experimenting is very simple. You have to act. And first and most important in Ireland, and this, you know, is very tough what I'm saying, but it's true. If any parents have children that are experimenting with depression, anxiety, please do not bring them to a GP. Do not bring your children to a general practitioner. Bring your children. Speak to them first. Professional people. GP are killing half of this country. GP, if they hear the word suicide, depression, they will prescribe medication that sometimes are worse than heroin and cocaine. Uh, uh, there is drugs available to young age kids that they don't even understand the consequence that will bring to their life. Uh, a personal opinion myself, do not bring your children to a general practitioner if addiction problem raised. Contact people like myself, like Community Chanacolo, like Better Together, like Sister Consiglio. Um, you know, there is a lot in Ireland, people that deal with addiction. Uh, speak with professional. Do not think that if your son is sad because he can see his bodies, uh, a Valium tablets will make him better or, 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 or with, uh, Xanax will keep him, you know, gentle. You know what I mean? No, 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 no. It's going to destroy his life. You know what I mean? And if they know they are smoking uh, marijuana, a lot of people say to me in my face, uh, you know, what's the problem with marijuana? You know, God has created marijuana. You know what I mean? And, and I say, well, yeah, God. Yeah, God has created this plant called marijuana, but he didn't told us, yeah, just roll it into a joint and smoke and go off your head. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That's true, yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can praise God for the beautiful plant, but it's the action that humanity does with God's creation, you know? So, of course, you know, people like that need help. If of family, course, yeah. if parents, if you know anyone that are struggling, we will link all the numbers where people can get professional advice for free, for free, you know, because I think a gift of recovery, you cannot put a price on it. Uh, in my life experience, I have been in houses in, you know, in, in the big cities, uh, in areas where there were, you could see addiction was destroying the family. There were guns, there were drugs everywhere, you know, and speaking to men, uh, trying to hope that they will surrender their life and go to rehab and stuff like that. I've been to houses in a state that I was looking at, talking to people and looking at maybe someone is still in my car outside, okay? But I've been also into a state where you have to drive in and there is a man with a cap and say, who are you coming to visit? So driving in the, into a 4.5 or 6 million house and the problem is the same. The problem is the same. From poverty to richness, yeah. the, the, the destruction of one person in addiction, it doesn't matter if you are rich or poor, it, everybody suffers. So I've been in, the, in, the, in both extremes. And unless there is a, a communal decision to act and save life, that's we have to save a life. So if my kids, no chance for them, like I will know. If, if your kids become lazy, money, are looking for money all the time, and, you know, they go, they don't tell you, stuff like you that. You will know, so yeah. They're, they're not a chance in their <laughs> life. But, but as well, I also told them, I also told them that they are free spirits, they are children of God, that they have to obey, and one day they have to stand up in their own uh, feet in life. Yeah. I also say to them, don't, uh, don't think that dad is not going to intervene because I'm going to pack the bags and we are going to fly to Medjugorje where they take even a teenager and I bring you to community. No chance. 
So you have to put a bit of fear of God. And, and when I go to school, I say to kids, you know, kids want to experience. So it's drink and drugs and stuff like that. And the first question that scandalized me, even when you talk to Holy Communion children, and I say to them, uh, good morning, I'm here to talk to you about uh, drugs. Does any of you know drugs? And you could have a room of 150 children. They yeah. all have their hands up. They name all the drugs, and that's scary. And for what, me, what, what age are you talking about, roughly, just for everyone? Children? Holy Communion, eight, eight and nine. Eight and nine. Wow, wow, very young in, age. Like. In, 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 big, in big city, okay? Yeah. In big city. Um, they know all the drugs, and that's very scary. Because you know your parents are allowing you to watch stuff in the television that you shouldn't know, watch, or you're already living that kind of experience already in your own home. So some of your siblings, cousins, or maybe your parents are addicted to some drugs. So they know the names, and that's very scary. One name in Ireland that is never mentioned, you know, when you, you go to teenagers or even adults, uh, teenagers, and you ask them to name you drugs, there is one drug that is never mentioned in Ireland, and it's alcohol. Alcohol? Yeah. Children have this kind of, it's so accepted in Ireland that alcohol is not seen as a drug. It's so like they more a name... cultural thing instead Correct. of an addiction. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Correct. And if you talk to any addicts in recovery, yeah. their first drugs, was alcohol. Wow. You know, and that's, that's very scary. So I understand the pain, the frustration, and the fear on the parents. But remember, if they're here listening, if they're listening tomorrow, you're not on your own. Reach out. Get in touch. These moments are moments of healing. These moments are today the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima. This it didn't happen by mistake. It should have been last week, but it came on tonight. So I just say, if anyone knows people, do not just walk by. Love one another, say the Lord. Whatever you can do for another, do it. Because tomorrow can happen to you. Exactly. So exactly. Let, let's help each other, you know? Yeah, yeah. And as you said, like, uh, we are not talking about exactly like, doesn't matter what nationality you are, what language do you speak. As you said, you didn't understand your Croatian, you know, friends. It's like, like, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter where you're from, your language, like, you know, doesn't matter. If you need help, just seek for help, you know? It's not about, you know, nationality, even religion or anything. It's about seeking for help, you know? So even after this live, if you don't mind, if you want me to send all the contacts, you know, even your contacts I will. Uh, or email, <clears throat> I will. we post it and everyone, anyone that needs it, seek for help. They know where they should go, you know, to the of right course, place. Of course, of course. And, you know, please keep us in the prayer because this uh, uh, adventure that is an uh, adventure for the Lord we day to the church in Ireland is uh, coming at the right time because I think... Uh, I think people in, people in, because we are in Ireland, okay? I've been to Malta and then do this on eight days in a row. I visit all the school, all the parishes, just to give awareness to the kids of the consequences, the consequences, because people don't think about the consequences. People want to have, uh, have fun now, pay later. You know what I mean? But sometimes yeah, you don't, yeah. are, you don't reach to check out. You die before you pay. Exactly. So, yeah. You know, let's pray that, you know, the parishes in Ireland, the priests in Ireland will, will hear our call and allow us to come in and talk to parents at mass and then to children into the school because they're trying to teach anything else to the children that they shouldn't be taught. But the reality is that most of the children in Ireland are ready to be sucked by the devil in addiction. And this is not something that I'm dreaming overnight. You read it on the paper, you know what I mean? You, you hear it on the radio, even professional that I it's don't like. It's on the like. news, yeah. Yeah, even professionals that I don't probably like, I, I listen to them. They say the number of people um, looking for help for alcohol addiction during the lockdown. 
or for medication addiction during the lockdown. So my dear brothers and sisters, we are here to say, you know, there is a group called Better Together that I join in to support myself, support others. There is help there. Don't stay and cry and scrub your head and say, what I'm going to do with my problem. Surrender your problem. Give us your problem. And we try to help you in the best way we can. Because, you know, God has saved my life for one reason only. To save souls. Exactly. Uh, you know what I mean? My body, my body is in bits, you know, from the addiction, from, from the consequences of my addiction. Okay. My body is in bits. But I still wake up every morning. And I wonder, you know what I mean? What do you want me to do for you today, Lord? And tonight is come in and tell the people, you're not alone. We understand the pain. But don't suffer. Come. Look for help. We are here. Exactly, We're yeah. waiting for you. Yeah. Janakolo is waiting for you. Better Together is waiting for you. Go and look for places. You know, it's great. The right, the right place. That's the thing. Look for right. the right place. Yeah. Yeah, the right place for the right person. Maybe exactly, there is people yeah. that, that have no faith and will find it very hard to join Community Chenacolo, that is a, a com Catholic community. But that doesn't mean that, you know, they have to die. It means that there is yeah, other yeah. help. Yeah. Go somewhere and it, else. Yeah, but, and it's good to mention as well that, I mean, uh, like, Jesus came on earth for all of us. Like, if we look course. into your life, uh, let's say you were on a well and then Jesus just came pull you back, pull you back, and then now you are here, married, six kids, a beautiful family, mm -hmm. beautiful life, and that's David, but that could happen yeah. with anyone, you know? It's not a grace that the Lord gave only to you, you are a blessing to share that with us, but that, uh, the Lord is there to rescue anyone. A a anytime, you know? because anytime, I remember the exactly. Lord... Exactly, yeah. The Even the journey of the Lord, when they carry him with the cross, they, each one of us, us, they are aware or unaware, when we were born, we were born with a cross. So you embrace your cross or you hate your cross. And I suggest people just embrace it. It's easier. It's quicker. <laughs> And you know what I mean? Exactly. Even, the Lord, even the Lord Jesus, on the walk to the Calvary, he fell because the cross was so heavy. And, you know, we thank uh, Simon of Siren, Siren, that came and helped him yeah. to carry the cross for a period. Even Jesus needed us sometimes to carry his cross during the Calvary. So we are all human beings. Jesus doesn't look your passport. Are you Catholic? Are you Protestant? Are you Islamic? Are you? No, he said, are you in pain? Come, come and get better. Because, you know what I mean? Life is worth to be living than waiting to die. I was sitting in a train station. Those dreams, the devil had his, his hands over my eyes, over my ears. I couldn't see myself. Happy, married, children. No, because my brain was completely sucked in by the evil one. Mm -hmm. And immediately, it wasn't uh, like, uh, you know, 10 years time. When I joined the community Chanakolo, I felt inside, I want to live. I want to be good, you know, immediately. And of course, it wasn't easy. You know what I mean? Of course, uh, yeah, yeah. As I mentioned, I mentioned it before, you cannot change a life of criminality or drug addiction for, a, for like 11 years and living in the streets overnight. It'll take time. So anyone that has a drug problem that is listening or knows someone with a drug problems, you know, the solution is no like that. There's no tablets for our disease. But there is a lot of people ready to dare and help you and carry you when you can't. So even through intercessory prayer, you know, like let's pray for our brothers and sisters. Let's pray that they will have an awakening call to go and looking for help. You know, exactly. and, that, and that's, that's the most beautiful desire that any human being can have in their heart. And aid to the church in need, like I could be working And I tried myself. I was working for multinational, American multinational, a huge salary and stuff like that. No, God didn't call me for that. God called me to be a beggar for the poor. Because every time I see those persecuted Christians, 300 million, their faces, their eyes, 
You know what they have? They have an amazing faith. And I get recharged and refilled of my own spirituality because they have nothing. I have nothing to be worried. And I'm going to destroy my life with a substance. Instead, no, I go out and I take courage, tell my story and beg for the poor because the poor really exist even here in Ireland. You Absolutely. know, we don't have to yeah. go very far. So exactly. the poor in spirit, the poor materially. And, and, and the Lord is there just waiting, waiting for me, for you, for anyone. He's there when you come exactly. and meet me. If anyone, David, let's say, if anyone in this live or anyone that's going to watch that afterwards, if they want to help you, help ACN, if they, su yeah. if they want to support Chanakulu yeah. or ACN, yeah. of course, they will help your ministry as well. Um, what do they look for? Just they go to the website and, you know, make a donation Perfect. or anything? Yeah. Would if they want right? to donate, <clears throat> yeah, at the moment, uh, if they want to help us to put this uh, ministry on the road uh, to support NOAS, because I, we don't make any money. A to the church in need. I joined this charity, A to the church in need. You say you were doing a bit of the ministry, and I remember it was beautiful. Uh, I stay with them because of the transparency. We don't take money from the state. We, we stand on the protection of Our Lady of Fatima, inspired by the Holy Spirit and provided by St. Joseph. So we work. We need your help. The poor are so many. So if you want to help us, Just go to our website. Everything is there. acnireland.org. Just go there. You can help. You can help many by just your prayer. And if you want to contribute, you're m most welcome. You know, we survive. No, we survive as a charity. The church survived thanks to the donation of our dearest benefactor Absolutely. for many years. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, if you want to support us and Chanakolo communities, Google, Google the name, the Senecal is where the Hopper Room, you know, they're here in County Mayo. But I'm going to give you all the details. The details, uh, we're gonna okay. Put, yeah, and we can put it in. So if people are looking for help, we'll, we'll guide them. We'll guide them, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got few few messages actually from people. Um, we might arrange okay. another live next time, maybe in a couple of weeks, and we can go into more different details. Uh, people are looking for help, so we can do that again, of course. And uh, yeah. our time is nearly finished. The pity. Okay. But uh, I want to thank you again, David, for joining me today. It was absolutely beautiful and a pleasure. And we, in our house, keep you and your mission, your mission work in our prayers. And if you want to say a final word to everyone... I hope final word would be delighted to hear. Yeah, my thank you, thank you, Mariana, for thinking about me. Uh, this poor sinner here begging for the poor. But uh, really, my my last words will be directed to Jesus and to Our Lady on our feast day. And I really ask, you know, Our Lady of Fatima to bless you with your ministry, your husband, your children. Amen. Bless each, each one of us here tonight, physically, spiritually, whoever wants to be here and cannot be here will be there tomorrow, that Our Lady and the Lord Jesus will be there and hold their hands. If there is people from Brazil, you know, Comunità Cenacolo, it is in Brazil. Just look for the information. Go, change your life. Fazienda Esperanza. ACN Ireland, support both. Cenacolo and Fazienda Esperanza. Go and change your life. You have nothing to lose. God is waiting for you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. We might finish this live. Today is our late of Fatima's day, so would you mind if, I, if you just start? Do you want to say Ave Maria for us? Hail Mary for us? Yeah, we can finish with uh, in Italian or in you English. Want, you can say in <laughs> Italian. That would be amazing. <laughs> okay, we'll do, we'll do an Italian one. Of okay. course. So we just say the name of the Father, Father and of the and Son, of the Son and, and of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you, Our Lady of Fatima, for the beautiful message that you gave in Fatima, that your Immaculate Heart will triumph. And from 1917 to now, we are living those times, waiting for your Immaculate Heart to triumph. I believe, and I hope everybody believes, that your message is true, that 
the conversion of heart of the humanity will happen one day at a time, one soul at a time. And we entrust Mariana, our family, our ministry, aid to the church in Aid Ireland, Cenacolo, everyone that's helping the poor, the lonely, to your heart. With a prayer, Ave Maria, piena di grazia, Signore e con te. Tu sei benedetta fra le donne, e benedetto è il frutto del tuo seno, Gesù. Santa Maria, Madre di Dio, prega per noi peccatori. Adesso è nell'ora della nostra morte. Amen. Our Lady of Fatima, pray, pray for, us. for us. Thank you very much, you all, for joining as well. Shelly, Fran, a lot of people join us today. And again, this live will be available on all social media. Myself and David are going to share it. And please, guys, if you need anything, if you need any help, do not stay in your room. Just cry for yourself. Just seek for help. David is there. And we are all there, whatever you need. You're there to help. Thank we, you so much. We are better together. Better together. Of course we are. <laughs> well done. Anyway, thank God you so much. You. God bless you and your family. Bye. Take care. God Bye. bless you. Bye. Bye-bye, everyone.